Today we're going to be doing an overview of all of the geometry rules that we've learned so far and we're going to practice using them in problems that involve a variety of different rules at one time. First of all, let's take a look at the rules that we have learned so far. Okay, so the first rule we learned was the sum of the interior angles of a triangle. We learned that all of those angles in a triangle will add up to 180 degrees every single time. And so whenever you have a triangle, if you know two of the angles, you can work out the third one by saying that they must all add up to 180 degrees. Okay, and when you, when you use this rule, the reason that you're going to give is the sum of the interior angles of triangle ABC or whatever the name of the triangle is. Remember, you have to name the triangle. Remember, when you are working in geometry, every time you make a statement, that statement has to be accompanied by a reason. You have to have a reason that goes along with that statement. Okay, so when you are working with the sum of the interior angles of a triangle, your reason will be this over here, sum of the interior angles of triangle, and then you name the triangle you're talking about, and they add up to 180 degrees. Our next rule is the exterior angle of a triangle. When you've got a triangle and one of the sides has been extended, forming an exterior angle outside over here, then that exterior angle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angle. So in this case, angle C2 is equal to angle A plus B. And our reason that we are going to use for that is exterior angle of triangle ABC. Again, you need to label or name the triangle that you are talking about. The next rule is the angles in an equilateral triangle. We found that when you have an equilateral triangle, all of the angles will be equal to the 60 degrees. They're all equal to each other and they're all equal 60 degrees. Remember, an equilateral triangle is a triangle that has all three sides that are equal to each other. So I can say angle A plus angle B plus angle C, they're all equal to 60 degrees. And our reason is angles of equilateral triangle ABC. Then we have isosceles triangles. Now remember an isosceles triangle is a triangle that has two sides that are equal to each other. Okay, so when you have an isosceles triangle, then the base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. Remember, the base angles are the angles that are opposite the equal sides. So even if this has been rotated like this, so that these are not at the bottom, they are still what we call the base angles because they're still opposite the equal sides. So angle B is equal to angle C, and our reason for that is because it's an isosceles triangle, we name the triangle ABC and we say which sides are equal to each other, which is how we know that this is an isosceles triangle. So AB is equal to AC. Then, using that same concept, but just working backwards, if we know that two angles in a triangle are equal to each other, then that means that the opposite sides will also be equal to each other. And that means that it will then be an isosceles triangle. So in this case over here, I know that angle B is equal to angle C, which means that AB, the side opposite angle C, is equal to AC, which is the side opposite angle B. And my reason for that is because those two angles are equal to each other in triangle ABC. Then we go on to our quadrilaterals. The interior angles of a quadri quadrilateral will always add up to 360 degrees. And our, our reason is the sum of the interior angles of quad and then whatever the quadrilateral is. So in this case, quadrilateral A, B, C, D. Then we've got angles around a point. Remember, every time you have angles around a point, all of the angles will add up to 360 degrees. And our reason for being able to say that is angles around a point. Then the angles on a straight line will add up to 180 degrees. And our reason, angles on a straight line. Over here, we have our vertically opposite angles. So when you've got straight lines that are crossing over each other, intersecting at one place over here, then the angles that are directly opposite each other, the vertically opposite angles will be equal to each other. And our reason is vert op angles, vertically opposite angles. So here I've got three pairs of vertically opposite angles. Angle O2 and O5, angle O3 and O6, and angle O1 and O4. All of those are vertically opposite angles in those pairs, and they will be equal to each other. 
Then we have our parallel lines being cut by a transversal. Remember when you have a transversal cutting through parallel lines, then, or when you have a transversal cutting through any pair of lines, then you will end up with corresponding angles, you'll end up with alternate angles, and you'll end up with co-interior angles. But when those lines that the transversal is cutting through are parallel, then it is special because we have relationships between those angle pairs that are different when, from when you have a transversal cutting through any other lines. When the lines are parallel, corresponding angles will always be equal to each other. So over here, remember, corresponding angles are the angles that are on the same side of the transversal as each other. So angle G1 and H1 are both on the left of the transversal. Angle G2 and H2 are both on the right of the transversal. G3 and H3 are both on the right of the transversal. And G4, G4 and H4 are both on the left of the transversal. Also, they must be in matching positions or corresponding positions. So G1 and H1 are both sitting on top of the parallel lines. G2 and H2 are also both on top of the parallel lines. G3 and H3 are both under the parallel lines. And G4 and H4 are also both under the parallel lines. So they are in matching positions to each other. So when your lines are parallel and you have a transversal cutting through, then your corresponding angles will be equal to each other and the reason we give is corresponding angles and then we have to say which lines were parallel because remember they are only equal if the lines are parallel so if the lines aren't parallel it means absolutely nothing then we've got our co-interior angles the co-interior angles are going to both be between the parallel lines and they will both be on the same side of the transversal as each other so Angle G4 and angle H1 are co-interior, and angle G3 and H2 are also co-interior, making a U-shape. Okay, and our and when we have co-interior angles, they are supplementary. That means that they add up to 180 degrees. And our reason for that is co-interior angles, and again, we have to name what, what lines are parallel to each other. So in this case, A, B is parallel to C, D. And then we've got our alternate angles. Now, alt alternate angles are the ones that are on the opposite sides or alternating sides of your transversal. So if one is on the left of the transversal, the other one will be on the right of the transversal. Okay, so angle G3 and angle H1. Here is angle G3 and angle H1. These two are both inside or between the parallel lines. So these are alternate interior angles, interior meaning inside. G4 and H2 are also both between the parallel lines. G4 is here, H2 is there. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're both between the parallel lines, so they are alternate interior angles. G1 and H3, there and there, are on opposite sides of the transversal, but now they are both outside the parallel lines, so they are alternate exterior angles. Exterior meaning outside. And then G2 and H4, same thing. There's G2, there's H4, they're on opposite sides of the transversal, and they are also both outside the parallel lines. So again, we have alternate exterior angles. And for all of those, we have to say which lines are parallel. Okay, and just then to remind you about the different types of angles we get for parallel lines, we've got our F shape that is made when you have corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are equal to each other. We have the U shape that is made when we have co-interior angles. And remember, co-interior angles are supplementary, meaning that they add up to 180 degrees. And then we've got the N shape, which is formed when we have alternate angles, and alternate angles are equal to each other. Okay, so now let's go through a few examples where we're going to practice using all of these rules together. The first example we're going to do is this one over here, where we've got triangle ACD which has been divided up into two parts by this line BE. And they also have told us that BE is parallel to CD. We have been given this angle is 84 degrees. This angle is 63 degrees. And we need to work out X, Y, and Z in this example. OK, so let's have a look at how we would do this example. OK, so first of all, here is my diagram. When you get a question like this, Okay, here I've got a triangle, which means I may well end up using the rules that I have for triangles, okay? But we're not going to use that yet, because if you look where X is, 
if I wanted to try and use the angles in a triangle, I would need to know all three angles in the triangle, or, or I would need to know two of them to be able to work out the third one. But I don't. I don't know this one. So I can't use the angles in the triangle to work out x. So I have to do something else to work out x. What I can do is I've got parallel lines over here, and here I've got a line that's cutting through the transversal, forming the angle C, which is x over here. Now that same transversal cuts through this parallel line over here, giving me this 84 degrees. So let's have a look and see what shape we get with the 84 degrees and the x. Like that. Okay, this is our, if we turn that around, it's kind of like an F shape, just backwards. Okay, so that is our F shape which means we're working with corresponding angles in this example. So, over here I have got x is equal to 84 degrees, because remember corresponding angles are equal to each other. So x equals 84 degrees, and my reason is going to be corresponding angles with BE parallel to CD. Okay, so that's the first thing that I can do, is I can work out the sides of x, and now that I've done that, I can fill that in on the diagram. So over here, this is 84 degrees. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out y over here. Now y, I can't use the 84 degrees, because it's not on the same transversal. Remember when we have parallel lines, if there's more than one tra transversal, we have to make sure that the angles we're working with are on the same transversal as each other. So over here, angle y is on the is here by the transversal AD. So I need to work with this 63 degrees over here to work out what angle Y is. So let's have a look at what shape we get over here. So I've got angle Y and angle 63. That makes that U kind of shape. Okay, so we're working here with co-interior angles. Remember, co-interior angles are supplementary, so they add up to 180 degrees. So for this one, I'm going to say that Y plus 63 degrees equals 180 degrees and my reason is co-interior angles with again BC parallel to CD or BE parallel to CD okay so now I know or now I can solve for Y quickly so let's say Y is equal to 180 degrees minus 63 degrees so therefore, y is equal to 117 degrees. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write that on my diagram over here. Now I can see what do I now know that can help me to work out the size of z. Okay, so to work out z, I the only thing I can do with z here is work with the triangle because the z is nowhere near any parallel line. So I can't work with parallel lines for z. What I can do is I can work with the interior angles of my triangle. I can say, do I know in triangle ABE the interior angles? I know that one. I don't know that one. I could work it out because I have got this angle over here, or I've got this one that I could use to work it out, but I don't know it yet. Let's have a look at our other triangle, ACD. Now, if you look at triangle ACD, I have angle C, which is 84 degrees. I have angle D, which is 63 degrees, and so now I can work out Z at angle A. So the interior angles of the triangle say that all the angles must add up to 180 degrees, so I can say Z plus 84 degrees plus 63 degrees all adds up to 180 degrees, and my reason is the sum of the interior angles of triangle and now I have to say which triangle am I talking about I'm not doing a B E because I don't know that angle over there I'm doing triangle a C D so some of the interior angles of triangle a C D okay now once I've got that I can then go and solve for Z so that gives me Z equals 180 degrees minus 84 degrees minus 63 degrees so therefore Z is equal to 33 degrees. And that's what you should get for that example. Okay, so here we have now used a combination of different types of rules. We've worked with 
work parallel lines. We've also worked with the angles in a triangle. So now we're going to be putting things together that we have learnt in all the different sections, the 2D shape section, as well as the straight line geometry section as well. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. The first one you're going to do is this one over here. Okay, so in this example, we have got triangle AED and triangle BDC. And we have been told that AE is parallel to BD, AD is parallel to BC, and we've been given these angles. Angle E is 60, 62 degrees, angle uh, C is 73 degrees, and we need to work out X, Z, and Y over there. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to solve this problem. Okay, so let's go through that example. So in this question, you have got over here, AED, we've been told this angle, we need to find X and we need to find Y. So we can't use the interior angles of this triangle because I only know one of the angles. So I need to use something else to work out X. So let's have a look at where X is. X is on this parallel line over here. So it is parallel to this angle or this line over here where EC is the transversal. So if I want to work out X using parallel lines, then here's the angle I've got over here by X. And here is an angle that I've got over here by C. And they, if you put them together, that kind of makes a backwards F. Okay, so that's our corresponding angles, which means that those two angles are equal to each other. So I can say that X is equal to 73 degrees. And my reason for that is because of corresponding angles with AD parallel to BC. Okay, so now I know this angle over here is 73 degrees. Once we've worked that out, we can then work out Y using the interior angles of this triangle. Because I know that one, I know that one, now I can work out the third angle. So Y plus 62 plus 73 is equal to 180 degrees. And my reason is going to be the sum of the interior angles of triangle, and in this case I'm working with triangle A, E, D. Okay. So now I'm going to go and solve for Y. So that gives me Y 
equals 180 degrees minus 62 degrees minus 73 degrees. So I have 180 minus 62 minus 73 gives me 45 degrees. Okay, so now I know that this angle over here is 45 degrees. The next thing I need to do is I need to work out Z. Now, these two angles over here are not going to help me to work out Z. 73 is also not going to help me because I don't know angle B over here. So I can't use the interior angles of this triangle. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to work with parallel lines again. But now Z is not on AD the same as X was. Z is on BD over here. So I'm working with this angle over here. And I've got a line that's parallel to BD, which is AE, which is this angle over there. And they also make that kind of F shape. So they are also corresponding to each other, which means that they are also equal to each other. So Z is equal to 62 degrees. And my reason for that is corresponding angles. But this time I'm working with AE parallel to BD. And that's what you should have got for question A. Right, now we're going to go on to question B. So in this question, we have got AB, which is parallel to CD. We also have EF parallel to IJ. And we've got this other line over here, GH, which is not parallel to anything. Okay, we've been told these two angles are 72 degrees and 110 degrees. And you need to work out the size of A, B, C, D, and E. And I'm going to give you three minutes for this question.
Okay, so let's go through that question and see how it went. So in this question over here, I have got AB parallel to CD, EF parallel to IJ, GH is not parallel to anything. Then I've got these two angles over here, that's 72 degrees and 110 degrees. I need to work out first A over here. Now, A, I'm not going to be able to really use the 110 because these two lines aren't parallel. So I can't work with 110 with the A. What I can do is I can get use the 72 to work out A. If you look over here at the A and the 72, and we join those up like that, that kind of makes our backwards F shape. Okay, so that is corresponding angles that we're working with over there. So A is equal to 72 degrees because corresponding angles are equal to each other. So A equals 72 degrees. And our reason is corresponding angles. And our lines that are parallel in, for this one is AB parallel to CD. Okay. So now I can fill that in over there in case it will help me for anything else later on. Now let's go on to B. So B is over here. Now to work out B, what I can do is I can say, well, I know that this line is parallel to that line. And I also know that this line is parallel to that line. If I wanted to use A, B and C, D again, like I did in the previous one, I would need to know something about an angle that is on the same transversal. This transversal is IJ. I don't know any other angles on IJ. Okay, I don't know what E is, so I can't use it to help me to work out B. So I'm not going to be able to work with A, B, parallel to C, B, C, D. Let's have a look at our other parallel lines. I've got E, F, and I, J. So a transversal that B is on is A, B over here. Another angle that is on A, B, cutting through those that one of those parallel lines, is angle A over here that I just worked out. I just worked out that that is 72 degrees, which means I can use that to help me to work out B. So over here... The angles are forming a U shape. So this is going to be our co-interior angles. So they are going to be supplementary, adding up to 180 degrees. So B plus 72 degrees equals 180 degrees. And my reason is because those are co-interior angles with, in this case, the parallel lines I was using was I, J, and E, F. Okay, so IJ parallel to EF. Okay, now I need to solve for B. So I'm going to take the 72 across, 180 degrees minus 72 degrees. So therefore B is equal to 108 degrees. Okay, so now I know that this angle over here is 108 degrees. Okay, so I'm getting there. Next thing I need to work out is C. Now, C over here, the only parallel lines that C is anywhere near is the A, B, and the C, D. It's on C, D over here. So the, the transversal is G, H over there. I don't know D, so I can't use that to help me to work out C. That's why I'm not doing straight line over here. But I do know this angle over here is 110. It's also on the line G, H, and it is also being made by GH cutting through one of those two parallel lines, A, B, or C, D. So over here, I've got 110 and I've got C, D. So the shape that they are making there is that kind of N shape. Okay, it's a bit stretched, but it still is there. And if you look at them, they are on opposite sides of the transversal and they're both between the parallel lines. So they are alternate interior angles and remember alternate angles are equal to each other so c is going to be equal to 110 degrees and my reason is alternate interior angles with a b parallel to c d okay so now i know that this is 110 degrees over there Next, I need to work out D. Now, D is going to be easy because I've just worked out C and they are at the same point on a straight line. So they are going to be supplementary. So I can work out D by using C that I just worked out. So D plus 110 for C is equal to 180 degrees. And the reason for that is because they are angles on a straight line. 
Okay, so now I can solve for D, so that's D equals 180 degrees minus 110 degrees, which gives me 70 degrees. Okay, so now I know this over here is 70 degrees. Next or last, I need to work out E, which is this one over here. Okay, now E is made by two lines that are part of parallel line pairs. Okay, so I could either be working with IJ parallel to EF, or I could be working with AB parallel to CD. We need to determine which pair of parallel lines we're working with and what is going to be our transversal. So either I'm working with AB and CD where IJ is the transversal, in which case I would then need to use another angle that is on that same transversal, and that would be this angle over here that I know. But if you look at them, they're on opposite sides of the transversal, but they're not both between or both outside. One is between the parallel lines and one is outside the parallel lines. So that's not going to help me with the, the three types of angles that I can get. It's not going to be corresponding or co-interior because they're on opposite sides of the transversal and it's not alternate because they're not both between or both outside. So I'm not going to be using that. I could use that to work out another angle and then use that to work out E, but there might be a quicker way of doing it. So let's have a look at what happens if I use IJ and EF as my parallel lines and CD is my transversal. So if I look, I'm going to be looking at something here and something here because that is where IJ and EF intersect CD. It's at those two points over there. So I've got this angle over here. So now I'm using CD as the transversal. This angle and that angle, they form the F shape. If I do this over here, there and there, that is our F shape over there. They are corresponding to each other. They are both on the same side of the transversal. So in this case, they're both above the transversal and they're both in matching positions to each other. So they both are on the left hand or the right hand side of the parallel lines in this case over here. So they are what we call corresponding angles and they are going to be equal to each other. So E is equal to 72 degrees. And my reason for that is corresponding angles with EF parallel to IJ. Okay, and that's what you should have got for that example. The next question is question C. Here we've got A, B, C, D is a, a quadrilateral where B, D is joined and they've told you A, D is equal to B, D and it's also equal to C, D. Okay. We have been told that AD is parallel to BC. You've been told this angle is 160, 106 degrees. Here, you've been given a label one and a label one just to help you with labeling angles if you need to. So this would be angle D1 and this would be angle B1. And you need to work out X and you need to work out Y. And I'm going to give you three minutes to solve this problem.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So over here, we have got our diagram. A, B, C, D is the quadrilateral where B, D is joined, okay? And we've been told A, D is equal to B, D and also to C, D. We've been told this angle here at D is 160 degrees. We need to work out X. Now, there are a couple of ways that we could potentially work out X if we had all the information we needed. One way is if we are looking at the triangle that X is part of, it is um, in triangle B, B, C, D over here. In order to work that out, I need to know the other two angles, or in this case, you can see that there are two lines that are parallel, which means or that are equal to each other, which means that they this is an isosceles triangle. Okay, so we can potentially use that. Another thing we could potentially use is the fact that these lines are parallel over here. So if you look at this angle, then I would need to know either that angle over there, or I would need to know this angle to be alternate with the X, or I would need to have this continuing and have that angle over there, which I don't have, okay? But I don't know any of those angles, so that's not going to help me. What I can do is I can use the isosceles triangle. The fact that this over here, triangle BCD, is an isosceles triangle, and I know that because BD is equal to CD, which means that the opposite interior angles of that triangle, this angle over here, will be equal to that angle. So if I know that, then if this is x, that means that that will also be x, which means I can then work out what x is because I have all of the angles in that triangle, either a value or a, something in terms of x. So I can work out what x is now. So I can first say, I first have to say that angle C is equal to x. And the reason I know that is because this is an isosceles triangle, BCD with BD equal to CD. Okay, so now I know that this over here is X. Now, once I work out X, I can then have an actual value to fill in there. Now, because I know these two angles are both X, and I know this angle is 106 degrees, I can use that to work out the value of X by using the interior angles of the triangle. So now, X plus X plus 106 equals 180 degrees. And the reason I know that is because of the sum of the interior angles of triangle. In this case, I'm working with triangle B, C, D. Okay, so now I can go and solve for X. So I have X plus X equal to 180 degrees minus 106 degrees. So 2x is equal to 74 degrees, which means that x is equal to 37 degrees. Okay, so now I know what x is. So that over there is 37 degrees. And this is also 37 degrees. Okay, now we need to work out y. Now y is over here. If you look at this triangle, it is also an isosceles triangle, which means that we can work out that this angle also be equal to Y because of the isosceles triangle. But we still can't work out what Y is because we need, like in this one, I knew what one of the angles was and that helped me to work out what X is. But in this case, I don't at the moment know any of the angles in that triangle, but I can work out an angle. I can work out this angle over here using the parallel lines. If you look over here, this angle and X over there make that N shape. Okay, so those are our alternate angles. They are on opposite sides of the transversal. The transversal is this BD over here. It's cutting through those two parallel lines. So they're on opposite sides of the transversal and they are both between the parallel lines. So I can say that these two angles will be equal to each other. So angle D1 is equal to 37 degrees because it's equal to X and we just worked out that, that was 37 degrees. So angle D1 is 37 degrees and the reason I can say that is because those are alternate angles with AD parallel to BC. Alternate interior because they're both inside angles with AD parallel to BC. Okay, so now I know 
that this angle over here is 37 degrees and that is going to help me to work out why. But again, there's something else I still have to do before I can work out y, and that is that I have to say that angle B1 is equal to y, because if I only know one angle, I can't work out another angle in a triangle without knowing anything about the third angle. So what I need to do now is I need to say that angle B1 is equal to y, and the reason I can say that is because this is an isosceles triangle as well. Okay, so angle B1 is equal to y, and the reason I know that is because of an isosceles triangle ABD with AD equal to BD. Okay, so now that I know that, let's go and put that over there. So now I have y, y, and 37 degrees. Now I can use the interior angles of that triangle to work out what y is equal to. So y plus y plus 37 degrees equals 180 degrees. And that is because of the sum of the interior angles of triangle ABD. Okay. Now I can go and solve for y. So this gives me y plus y equals 180 degrees minus 37 degrees. So therefore 2y is equal to 143 degrees. That gives me 71.5 degrees. So now I know that x is 37 degrees and y is 71.5 degrees. And that's what you should have got for question C. Right, now you're going to do question D. Now in question D, we've got over here, BF parallel to CD and AC parallel to ED. And we've also got this line drawn through from C through E to G. Okay, you've been told this angle is 85 degrees, here this angle is 32 degrees, and you need to work out x, y, and z. And I'm going to give you two minutes to do this question. Okay, so let's go through that. So in this question, we have got these two lines that are parallel, B, F, and C, D, and A, C, and E, D are also parallel. We've got this line drawn through from C through E to G, and we've got this angle is 85 degrees, there's 32 degrees. First, we need to work out X over here. Now, X isn't going to... I'm not going to be able to work, use the 85 to work out X, Okay, because if you look at this 
line and that line as parallel lines. This is on CD, but it is not between CD and AC. It is between CD and CG. So CG is acting as the transversal in this one over here. Okay, AC could be a transversal, but in this case where I'm working with X, CG is going to be my transversal over there. So I need to find another angle that is on CG at the other parallel line, which is BF. And that is this angle over here, 32 degrees. Okay, so now let's have a look and see what shape they make. Okay, they're both on the same side of that transversal. Okay, they're both on this side of the transversal. And they are both in matching positions. They both are above the parallel lines. So this is making our F shape, it's kind of like very skew, but it is our F shape, that is our corresponding angles. So over here, X is going to be equal to 32 degrees because corresponding angles are equal to each other. So X equals 32 degrees, and my reason is because of corresponding angles with CD parallel to BF. Okay, so now I know that this over here is 32 degrees. The next thing I need to do is work out Y. Now, if I take this Y and I want to try and work out what Y is, then Y is inside a triangle here, but I would need to know what these two angles are, or I would need to know what this angle is to be able to work out Y using the 85 degrees as the exterior angle. That's not going to work because I don't know this angle. I could work it out. I could do virtually opposite angles over there to work out what this angle is, but it means doing an extra step. Okay, so that is a potential option, but uh, let's see if there's a quicker way of doing it that doesn't require that extra step. Okay, another way that I could do it is if I were to use these two lines that are parallel with this as my transversal, and if I knew this angle and if I knew that angle, then I could, or if I'm working out this angle and I know that angle, then I could work it out with alternate angles, but I don't know that angle, so that's not going to help me either. What I can do over here, though, is instead of using this as my transversal, I can use AC as my transversal for these two parallel lines, and I can work with this whole angle here. Now, the reason I can do that is because I know what this one is. So I can work out Y. If I can work out this whole angle, then I can work out Y because I already know what part of that angle is. I just need to work out what the rest of it is, which is why, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this angle with this angle over here, which are corresponding to each other. So this angle and that angle, they are equal to each other. Now this angle over here is 85 degrees, we know that. This one is Y plus X, but we just worked out that X is 32 degrees. So this angle is Y plus 32 degrees. Okay, so over here, I'm going to say that Y plus 32 degrees is equal to 85 degrees because that angle is corresponding to that angle. And here, the parallel lines I'm working with are BF and CD. Okay. So now I need to go and solve for y and work out what y is actually equal to. So I've got y equals 85 degrees minus 32 degrees. So therefore, y is equal to 53 degrees. Okay, so now I can go and fill that in over here. y is 53 degrees. Now the last one that I need to work out is z, this angle over there. Now z is between these two parallel lines. I could potentially use the fact that this Z is in a triangle if I knew that angle, but I don't. I could work it out, okay, just like I could work out that angle to work out this one. I could work it out, and then I'd be able to work out Z using the interior angles of a triangle, but that would require an extra step. So is there a way that I can do this without needing an extra step? Okay, so let's see. Z, if I look at that with parallel lines, then if my, these are my parallel lines and this is my transversal, then this angle and that angle, they are co-interior, 
but I don't know those two angles, so that's not going to help me over here. Okay, this angle and this angle are also co-interior if I'm working with these two lines that are parallel with this as my transversal. These angles over here together and this angle, those are co-interior to each other. So what I can do is I can say they will add up to 180 degrees. Now I've just worked out that this is 53 and this is 32, so I know the whole size of that angle. So I can work with that with the z. So I can say that z is equal to that or z plus that plus that because they are supplementary equals 180 degrees. Okay, so z plus 53 plus 32 degrees equals 180 degrees. So this angle over here and this whole angle over here. The 53 and the 32 together and the z over there. Those are the angles I'm working with at the moment that are co-interior, which means that they are supplementary. With AC parallel to ED. Okay, so now I can go and solve for z. So I can say z is equal to 180 degrees minus 53 degrees minus 32 degrees. So therefore, z is equal to 180 minus 53 minus 32 gives me 95 degrees. And that's what you should get for that example. Okay, now we're going to go on to the last question for today. Now in this one over here, you have been given a quadrilateral AFDB and you've been given a point in the middle over here somewhere, not quite the middle, point O, which is joined to E over there, C over there, and A. You've been told that these two lines, AF and OE, are parallel, and these two lines, AB and OC, are parallel. You've been told this angle is 96, there is an 85, and you've been told those are perpendicular to each other, and you need to work out what X is. Now, this question is going to require multiple steps to get you to the point of working out what X is. Okay, so now I'm going to give you two minutes to solve this problem. Okay, so let's see how that question went. Right, so in this one over here, we are trying to work out x. Now, x is inside a para or a quadrilateral, not a parallelogram, a quadrilateral over here, or it's also inside this quadrilateral over there. Okay, now, first of all, we need to just establish the fact that this line is not parallel to anything, and this line is not parallel to anything. 
these two lines are parallel and those two lines are parallel, but we have not been told that these two lines are parallel to anything else, which means that we're not going to be able to use parallel lines directly to work out x. Okay, that's not going to work. So I can't say x and 90 are co-interior. I can't say that x and 85 are co-interior because they are not, these are not parallel and those are not parallel. Okay, so first we have to just establish the fact that we can't do that. The next thing we can look at and say is, well, I can't do parallel lines to work out x directly, but I do have parallel lines that I will be able to use in some way. What I can do is x is inside this quadrilateral. I already know that angle. So if I can work out the other two angles, I can then use the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral to help me to work out x, because we know that all the angles in a quadrilateral must add up to 360 degrees. So if I can work out these two angles, then I can work out x. Now, I can work out these two angles using the information I've been given. If you look at this line, it's parallel to that line. So if I look over here, this angle and this angle over here are corresponding. They are both on the same side. This is the transversal cutting through those parallel lines. They are both on the same side of the transversal. They're both on this side of the transversal and they're in matching positions. They're both on this side of the parallel lines. So they are corresponding to each other. So angle E2 is 85 degrees because of corresponding angles. And the parallel lines that I was using over there are AF parallel to OE. Okay, so now I know that this angle over here is 85 degrees. Okay, now we need to see if we can work out what this angle is, angle C1. Now the reason I need to know this angle is because if I know all three angles over here, I can work out the fourth one, which is inside this quadrilateral. Okay, so angle C1, now angle C1 is on this parallel line, Here's the other parallel line, and the transversal cutting through over here, BD, I know that this angle is 90 degrees, they are perpendicular, so I can work out that angle C1 is also going to be 90 degrees because these are also corresponding angles. If you look over here, there, and there, these two angles, are again they're on the same side of the transversal so they're both on the left hand side of the transversal and they're in matching positions they're both underneath those parallel lines okay so they are corresponding so they're also going to be equal to each other which means that angle C1 will be 90 degrees and the reason I know that is because of corresponding angles just like in the previous one, but this time, the lines that are parallel that I was working with was AB and OC. So AB parallel to O or CO. Okay. Finally, we can now go write that on here and we can use that to help us to work out X. Okay, so this is 90 degrees. So now I can work out X by saying that that plus that plus that plus X must all give me 360 degrees because these are the angles in a quadrilateral. Okay, so now I can say x plus 85 degrees plus 96 degrees plus 90 degrees equals 360 degrees. And my reason is because of the sum of the interior angles of quad, I'm just going to do that over here, quad, and my quad is called OEDC. Okay, so that is my reason for being able to do that. Now let's go and solve for x. So I'm going to have x equals 360 degrees minus 85 degrees minus 96 degrees minus 90 degrees. And that gives me x equals... 89 degrees. So that's what you should have got for that example. And that is how we work with mixed examples where we have 
all of the rules that we've learned for geometry in the 2D shape section as well as the straight line geometry section all mixed together. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.